Today's cars are not just for transportation. At the same time, they deliver safety, driving stability, energy optimization and emission control. And we propel the car with different means, either pure electric, combustion engine and transmission, or even a mix at the same time. This will lead to even more electronic control units in the vehicle. From small and simple to large and complex. And they have to interact nicely together to, let's say, drive electric on cruising, accelerating for passing by, or recuperating on a downhill ride. But all of them have something in common. They need software to work. A traditional combustion engine consists out of 80 functions working nicely together in a real-time regime and are made out of two to three million lines of code. Adding new capabilities and functionality to the system will increase the software even more. Consequently, we will need new technologies in the electronics for motion. Let's have a look to the hardware. How does the situation look like from hardware point of view? At the moment, we have up to 150 electronic devices in a vehicle and a rather complex network in between. The good thing on the situation is that every single device is quite simple from hardware as well as software point of view because they have a clear dedicated task to deliver, like taking care of the combustion process. But we also see a trend in the vehicle architecture. It's called up integration. It transfers the complexity from the architecture into the software. And this brings two benefits. First, it reduces the number of devices. And second, makes the network much more simpler. And both together saves a lot of cost for our customers. Let me give you a quote from a software pioneer. People who are serious about their software should build their own hardware. And this fits quite well to us. We are well prepared for this up integration process because we know how to do a co-development between hardware and software to reach the highest level of system performance. And we know best how to do a reliable and scalable hardware platform from our legacy products. They are built with a modular chipset approach. You can refer to a Lego brick built device. We run this already in the seventh generation very successfully. How we tackle the challenge from software point of view, let's have a look. Yes, we are serious about software. With 25 and more years of experience, being co-founder and still active member in Autosar, we know what it means to integrate such kind of software in our master control system. This kind of software will grow easily up to 8 and 10 million lines of code, which is at least five times more than today. Having this complexity in mind, we ask ourselves the three crucial questions. How we can do this in Autosar? How can we still use our software assets? And how can we bring the parties together working in such system? Our new app technology is the answer. There is a solid operation system. There will be apps delivered from different parties and we install them directly or over the air. But don't forget, we still have to provide control for engines, motors and actuators in a real-time environment. Therefore, we designed our app technology to provide deterministic, safety and reliable frameworks. With our cost-optimized hardware and the new app technology, we will pave the road for centralized master controller for motion and more. We believe with this, we will even change the way we work with our customers, suppliers and partners in the overall ecosystem. Let me give you an outlook. What comes beyond the master controller? We explained to you that the master controller is our versatile brain inside the vehicle. 
It controls and handles all the data. Around them, there are the so-called zone controllers. They execute the function and they distribute the energy to the actuators. Both devices together is a huge growth potential for us.